Hey, what's going on there guys? Nick here from Absolute MTG, and today we're going to be taking a look at Abzan Whip for the Cons of Tarkir Season of Standard. So the reason why I like Abzan Whip over something like Sedisi Whip is probably just because Sedisi is so vulnerable to removal and it's dependent on it actually staying alive during its activations for you to actually get the tokens. And also, I don't like whenever my opponent has overlap with their removal for multiple threats that I'm actually playing in my deck. And by this I mean Bob Light's really good against the Hornet Queen tokens and it's equally as good against Sedisi um, herself or even just Sedisi tokens. But uh, I think even more so, Drown and Sara is just really good up against our Sidisi tokens and also our Hornet Queen and the Hornet Queen tokens. So I don't want my opponent to have a huge amount of overlap with the cards that they're actually using against us. So to combat this, we're playing bigger creatures and we're playing Siege Rhino, which is conveniently like one of the best creatures in the format. Uh, with this, we're also able to play a variety of different white cards on our sideboard as well, including some Planeswalkers. So for those of you guys that don't know and haven't seen on social media or don't follow us on social media, uh, I actually won a preliminary Pro Tour qualifier with this deck. Uh, I think the deck's really well positioned in the meta right now, and it's probably what I'm going to be playing up until Fate Reforged actually comes out. So to start things off, the first card that we have is Fleece Main Line. So I have three Fleece Main Line on the main board, one on the sideboard. The cards are really good in the, the matchups where you're just kind of aiming to play a really long game. It's good to play against the tempo and aggro matchups just because it's either going to trade or it's going to provide to be a awkward card for your opponent to not be able to swing around. Um, but I think the biggest reason to actually run Fleece Main is just that it's good in the Abzan Mirror match whenever you're able to make it monstrous, and it's good in the control matchup if your opponent's not playing like Perilous Vault or Aether Spouts, which you don't really see either of those cards very much right now. Uh, Sylvan Carry added is in here as a 4 of to allow us to ramp and to have some mana fixing as well, because playing a t turn 3 Siege Rhino is just the best feeling. Uh, we have four Seder Wayfinder and one Commune with the Gods for our Dredge Package. Um, almost always the Seder Wayfinder is just going to side out after game one for more mid-range type cards. And then you make just kind of like decision on what actual cards you're going to be bringing in based on the matchup over the Seder Wayfinder. But uh, I've found pretty much every single time that I just side out the Wayfinder, my opponent ends up siding in cards that are anti-dredge or they're uh, like graveyard hate cards and they end up just kind of being disappointed because we're not really playing a dredge style deck anymore. Uh, so the Wayfinder is like almost always side out. There are some situations where you don't side it out, but uh, almost always the Seder Wayfinders end up siding out for more useful cards and it's the easiest... Uh, four slots that you can free up to sideboard and stuff. Uh, the Commune with the Gods, sometimes I set it out, sometimes I actually keep it in, but uh, usually I keep it in and it's a pretty good resource for finding creatures or enchantments that we have. I have four Corsair of Crufix in the main board, so lets you win the Attrition War pretty well, lets you play lands off the top, so you actually get to your valuable spells quicker, and you can also manipul manipulate your uh, draws with fetch lands if you want to reshuffle your deck and have a new card revealed on top. Uh, we have the four Siege Rhinos, which are just really good at grinding out games. If you can play them in sequence and whip them back in sequence, you're pretty much just going to win a game. And on top of like whip, um, it's usually so much life gain that most tempo decks actually can't match that, and you'll just end up winning from all the life gain that you're getting from Siege Rhino and uh, whip. We have three Doomwake Giants, so the Doomwake Giants are really great with Constellation and just kind of giving you an edge against the Mirror Match. Um, it's really good at just wiping out Hornet Queen tokens, which is just kind of like the centerpiece of this deck. So if you have the Doomwake Giants to be able to uh, combat any Hornet Queens that your opponent has, then you're just in a really good spot. It's also really good at just getting rid of tokens in like the Jeskai tokens decks, and it's also good at... Uh, actually fighting off Elspeth tokens as well. We have three Hornet Queen, which is like the centerpiece uh, outside of like the Siege Rhino that we're playing in this deck. Um, Hornet Queen is our ideal and preferred target for our whip, and uh, it's the card that we want to be whipping back and getting some value off of because getting four 1-1 one, one green insect creatures with Flying and Death Touch is a really good feeling, especially when you're only paying four mana to do so. 
Um, but the Hornet Queen is just really good at blocking a lot of valuable creatures that your opponent has. And uh, just the fact that they have Death Touch really clogs up most games. Uh, we have a Singleton Soul of Innistrad. I almost want to try to jam another one in here because the card's just really good, but I actually still like it just as a one-off. Uh, six drop, and it's a 6-6 six, six creature with Death Touch, five mana, and we can activate it either while it's on the battlefield or in our grave. Uh, we return three creatures from our uh, graveyard to our hand, or up to three creatures from our graveyard to our hand. And if it's in our graveyard, we exile the card with the activation of it. Uh, but Soul of Innistrad is just really good, just because uh, you could dredge it away with like a Seder Wayfinder, it hits your grave. Uh, you play your game where you're playing Siege Rhinos, your opponent has downfalls and stuff like that. And then you pay the five mana, you take back your Siege Rhinos and maybe like a Corsair or something like that, and then you still have more creatures that you're playing with and your opponent really doesn't have as many resources. And then for like our spells, we have two Thoughtseize, which is just really good for like the slower matchups uh, where you get to pick away at what your opponent has and their resources. Uh, we have three Heroes Downfall and two Murderous Cut for our removal. And then we have the three Whip, which is kind of like one of the most important cards for a lot of different matchups. Uh, really good for allowing you to grind out the mid-range matchups and at the same time it's just really good up against the tempo matchups just because you're going to gain way too much life for them to actually be able to keep up with you. So now on to the sideboard. So uh, we have a lot of singletons on our sideboard but uh, for the most part a lot of our cards are actually just kind of here for the slow grindy matchups. So uh, what we're playing in the sideboard is a Doom Blast, a Elspeth Sun's Champion, Soren Solemn Visitor, Utter End, Farika God of Afflictions, two Thoughtseize, a Fleecebane Lion, Doom Wake Giant, two Bow Blight, three Drown in Sorrow, and a Reclamation Sage. So to kind of talk about the matchups and like where each card comes into play. So the Doom Blast and the Elspeth are good for like the slower grindy matchups. Same thing with Utter End and Farika God of Affliction. And uh, the Thoughtseize, if control really isn't a huge thing in your meta and control like almost never shows up, I would probably slim down the Thoughtseize to uh, just one in the sideboard and then like play another card that's more useful and impactful for the other matchups that you do actually see. Um, I don't really find it necessary to have four full copies of Thoughtseize for the Abzan Mirror match. Uh, however, the card is very practical and necessary up against the control decks, so that, that's the only reason why I have two copies in the sideboard. Um, the Farika is really good at just kind of grinding out the Abzan Mirror match. It's really good against the whip decks as well, because if your opponent goes to whip back like a Siege Rhino, or they go to whip back like a Hornet Queen or something like that, you can respond by exiling the card and giving your opponent a 1-1 Death Touch creature uh, instead, which... Uh, sometimes is just a huge and massive difference. Sometimes your opponent actually forgets that you can exile cards out of their out of their graveyard and give them a token instead. Uh, but the Freaka is really good for allowing you to have some better line of plays as far as combating the mirror match goes. Um, and it's just a really good card because you can make it active almost always and you can just swing for five every single turn and just gain back some life if you have the whip out. Uh, the other end is for like the slower matchups, so Anything that isn't just trying to aggressively just beat you by like turn 4 and turn 5, uh, you want to have the utter end to be able to exile your opponent's valuable creatures and planeswalkers and even permanents if they're playing like uh, ascendancies. In the case of like Jeskai Tokens, I'll still side in the utter end because my opponent has the chance to side in like planeswalkers like Chandra or Sarkon. They'll still probably play like Banishing Light against us or Chain to the Rocks. So. We have some overlap for cards that we can actually hit with the other end outside of the Ascendancy itself. But the other end is just good up against getting rid of like other whips, uh, planeswalkers, and valuable creatures that our opponents have. Uh, the Soren is almost like another whip. It's like our fourth whip basically for the tempo matchups. Um, in the tempo matchups, like the hyper aggressive decks, I won't set in the Elspeth, but I will set in the Soren just because it is that other whip for us that we can use. And uh, with that, I'll also side in the Fleece Main Line as well, just because it's a good two drop that we can drop on the battlefield and we can just kind of manipulate the way our opponent's making plays and the way that they're actually allocating resources and getting around our creatures. Um, but the Soren's really good at just giving us an edge up against opponents that could be siding in Galera of Heresy or Reclamation Sage or anything like that against us, just because. Um, the Soren can't be hit by any of those cards, so we can just have a pseudo whip out there that can give our creatures lifelink for the turn, or until our next turn, rather. 
Uh, the Doomwake Giant is useful for like the Mirror Match. Uh, it's useful for like the Elspeth Token decks. Um, even against control, I'll side in the fourth Doomwake Giant just because it can effectively wipe out any Elspeth tokens that my opponent has. Uh, if I can whip it back for the turn, it can get rid of Elspeth tokens and also attack the Elspeth as well, which is pretty good. Um, but the Doomwake Giant's just good at having my creatures be bigger than your creatures, even just for the sake of attacking for a turn. And we have so many enchantments between, like our Courser and our Whips um, that we can just kind of manipulate how big our opponent's creatures are and we can just kind of take advantage of that. I've actually had games where I've played Doomwake Giant and then the following turn I've played a, another Whip on top of the one I had out on the battlefield just so I could get an activation out of the Doomwake Giant and then I just sack one of the Whips. Um, so there are some line of plays that you can make with overlapping enchantments like your Whip where uh, you can actually work it towards your advantage and get rid of what your opponent actually has on the battlefield. Uh, the two Bob Light and the Drawn Sorrows are mainly there for like the, the tempo matchups, anything where your opponent's efficiently just trying to crowd up the board with small dudes. Uh, the Drawn and Sorrow is really good up against the Citizy Whip decks, uh, and so is Bob Blade. Uh, however, Bob Blade's good up against like the token decks, um, it's good up against the Mirror Match. And it's good up against like the Mardu decks, like anything running R Goblin Rabble Master, you want to have the Bob Light just to be able to get rid of the Rabble Master before it makes tokens. Uh, or even like after the fact, it's pretty good up against like getting rid of what your opponent actually has and the, their developed board state. Uh, but the Drawn and Sorrow, I will side that in in some quantity for the Mardu matchup as well. Um, it doesn't hit like the Butchers that your opponent may have, however it does clear a board that has uh, Hordling Outburst tokens, Goblin Rabble Master, and its tokens as well. So uh, the Drown and Sorrow are usually sided in like a two of, up against those matchups. And then the last card that we have here is Reclamation Sage, which is actually pretty impactful for a lot of different matchups. So uh, it's good for the Mirror Match because it can hit Doomwake Giant, Whip, and Courser. Uh, it's good up against the Jeskai Tokens deck because it can hit the Ascendancy, and if your opponent has like Chain to the Rocks or a Banishing Light that they're bringing in against you, you can hit those as well. Um, I like to side into Reclamation Sage in the Abzan Mirror Match as well, just because they can hit the Courser if your opponent has um, a Whip of Erebos out there that they sided in on their own, then you can hit that as well. Um, and just like even like the Mardu decks that are playing like Chain to the Rocks and could side in maybe like another Banishing Light or something like that, um, Reclamation Sage is just good at getting rid of those. So uh, any of the matchups where you see that your opponent's playing like any amount of artifacts or enchantments or you could expect them to side in more artifacts or enchantments, uh, the Reclamation Sage is just a pretty good call for sideboarding a copy in and just on the off chance hitting your opponent and just getting a, mass, a maximum amount of value from uh, playing a 3-drop 2-1 creature. So that is our sideboard here and that is our deck tech for Abzan Whip. I hope you guys enjoyed the deck tech and if you did I would appreciate it if you thumbs up the video and subscribe for more Magic the Gathering content. Our entire deck list is down in the description below and you can also find the deck list via deckstats.net and you guys can look at the pricing for cards and other statistics for the deck as well if you're interested in that. But until next time guys, thank you for watching and peace out. If you guys want to keep up to date with everything that we have going on here at Absolute MTG, remember to hit that subscribe button, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. Also, remember to check out our sponsors of the channel, MTG Madness and AVUGames.com. But as always, thank you guys for watching.